I'm using this piece of scrap to duplicate the scallop pattern to match the outside of the ring gear on the mechanical flower. The biggest problem trying to center this is that this has an odd number of indentations or scallops. I only wanted to use one of these pieces of scrap for the pattern in case I messed this one up. So I glued a piece of quarter inch plywood to both sides of the scrap pattern using super glue. And then I'll go ahead and duplicate that onto each part of the uh, quarter inch plywood. And then I'll come back and I'll split this to uh, separate the two quarter inch plies. One advantage of using this Dremel slitting saw in the Fordham tool is you can really slow it down. A lot easier to control. These small saw blades are relatively dangerous Using that slitting saw is not the safest thing in the world, but it does provide a solution. Using a screwdriver, you can get that plywood to split apart. Now I can run that through the drum sander and clean that up, and I'll be back to my quarter inch plywood. I started off with seven discs, four on the top and three on the bottom. These go from five inch to about five and a half, and the bottom goes from six inch to about five and three quarter. I put those on the disc sander and sanded this so the taper on top and bottom was the same. I then glued these four together and these three and cut the centers out on the scroll saw. This is two inches thick, and you can just barely cut that out on a scroll saw. Down here it was an inch and a half thick, and that was pretty easy. The inside was tapered. This and this were tapered separately. And this material in here was removed by grinding by hand. That's the way I chose to do it. Now I have some attachments for the Fordham tool that makes that fairly easy and I felt it was safer than trying to do it on the router table. This was rounded over on the router table with a round over bit. And this section was created with a bull nose. Then I wanted a bottom. Took a piece of scrap plywood, drilled a hole in the center of that and used that to make this round. Then attached that to this with carpet tape and went back to the disc sander and sanded this taper onto this piece by hand. Drilled and located those holes, got rid of the carpet tape, rounded over all the edges, 
and that will be held in place by four screws. And that hole doesn't hurt a thing, it'll just stay there. After making this piece that matches up with the ring gear, I attached that and then sanded this to the same taper on the disc sander. Very carefully, and do it by hand. This piece and this piece were complete, and I could attach those two. I went to the inside and cleaned up any misalignment that was there. The bottom is held in place with the four screws. And all that grinding that was done in here was to remove enough material so that motor would fit in there and would be centered on the base of the mechanical flower. And when we're done, this will just drop in there. That scallop section holds the ring gear and the motor will be turning the center portion which allows us to operate. And I made two of them. This one's a little bit taller than that one. The next and final video on this project will show the installation of the motor and some electronics that will allow for a push of a button to run this for a short predetermined time. If you're interested in one of these, please go to the website link that's in the description for this video and it will help support this channel, not only for the purchase of this item, but for any of the Ugear products through the link in the description.